I am frequently asked by my menopausal patients, Prudence, I'm so tired. What can I do about this? So when I approach this problem, I look at three different areas. The first one is lifestyle. The second one is what's missing in terms of our brain chemistry. And the third one is hormones, what hormones are missing. In terms of lifestyle, when you want to sleep, you want to prepare a sleep routine for yourself. And that means not getting ready for bed at 10 o'clock at night, right when you're very tired and, and want to jump in bed. Start around 8.30 or 9. You know, the face routine, washing your, your face and, and all the creams and everything that we do, brushing our teeth. So then when you become tired at 10 o'clock, whammo, you nail it, you're in bed. The second thing that'll help in terms of a lifestyle is being aware of what is around you. Is there chaos around you? Is the TV blaring? Are you working on your computer, using your brain a lot? So as bedtime approaches, about an hour before bedtime, turn the lights down, turn the computer off, uh, stop working at least an hour or two before you are ready to go to bed. Turn off the TV, maybe turn on some soothing music, something that, that, that is reminiscent or that reminds you that your mind is slowing down, the body is slowing down. A lot of women uh, take a, a bath at night, a warm bath, and I suggest putting a little bit of Epsom salt into the bath. That's magnesium, and that can help induce sleep. So don't do intense activities right before sleep. Turn off your phone. I mean, I, I love to, to just flip my phone on off. People know it's not a good time to call me at 9.30 or 10. Or, I mean, even international calls, you know, they all know that it's, uh, it's going to be too late for me here. The second thing that you can do is something that I, I almost tell every patient. There are a number of supplements that are very healthy for the brain that'll help turn the brain off and decrease the anxiety that a lot of women feel in menopause and start bringing the sleep cycle into uh, a natural rhythm of deep sleep. So the first one would be magnesium glycinate. Glycinate is great for the brain and calms the body for sleep. Uh, it's about 300 to six or 700 uh, milligrams. And you can titrate your magnesium to your bowel um, tolerance. And what that means is magnesium can cause diarrhea. So if you start having diarrhea, you cut it back a little bit. If you don't have diarrhea, you can raise it up to the point where you do and then just cut it back a little bit. Um, also, melatonin is a very important supplement. Melatonin is a brain hormone. And when we're young, we have very high levels of melatonin. Uh, melatonin is one of the hormones that starts to decrease. And I put most of my women on melatonin. Five milligrams is a good starting dose. You take it about an hour before sleep. If you don't sleep through the night and fall asleep quite easily, then I recommend going to 10 milligrams. And uh, you can keep going like up like that every three or four days, all the way up to 30 milligrams. The, the, the one side effect that can happen from melatonin is that you can feel extremely tired in the morning. And what that means is that the melatonin has not been metabolized yet. It's still in your system, so you can wake up feeling like you're in the middle of the night. If that happens, start with the melatonin a few hours early. Also, melatonin can cause or release unhappy dreams or scary dreams. And if that happens, it's like... Just double your dose. You won't remember a thing, and, and all of that will stop once you've really gotten into a good sleep pattern. The third uh, reason why women cannot sleep in menopause is that their estrogen is low. And when estrogen is low, the body is more inflamed, so up goes inflammation, up goes stress, so the body feels much more stressed, and uh, up goes all kinds of sugar cravings. So a lot of women tell me, oh, I have to have you know, a bowl of ice cream before I go to sleep, or I'm hungry again, even though I just ate a couple of hours before. So that's generally due to low estradiol. And estradiol is the main hormone in your body that allows the brain to turn off, to sleep deeply, and not to wake up all night. So I replace the missing hormone, estradiol, with a bioidentical hormone. And women start to sleep and feel so much more rested. Another hormone that can interrupt sleep is the adrenal stress hormone. So in menopause, when your estrogen is low, here it is low, what happens is that the adrenal stress hormones start to rise. 
the body feels stressed when it loses its hormones. So low estrogen, high adrenal stress hormones. And what happens when you have high adrenal stress hormones? You feel nervous, you feel anxious, you feel like you should be doing something. I mean, there are things to do, let's get busy. So it, it activates you. And then we start to feel very, very tired, but can't sleep. It's kind of a wired and tired form of fatigue. Fatigue, rather than just saying, yeah, I'm tired, I'm going to go to sleep. There's one part of you that's very wired. So I correct those adrenal hormones. That would be DHEA, pregnenolone, and cortisol back to youthful levels. And sleep is much deeper. There's less chatter, less birds flying around the brain. The brain is calm and, uh, you know, much, much more uh, able to sleep. I have a supplement that I created called Sweet Sleep. And I love the supplement because it works so well for women. It has melatonin, GABA, 5-HTP. It has um, magnesium in it. And it works very well for sleep. So you could either take the different supplements like GABA, 5-HTP, melatonin separately and see what works for you. Or you could take one to two sweet sleeps an hour before sleep. So lifestyle, prepare for sleep. Number two, get the supplements ready for you to take about an hour before sleep. And number three, get your hormones balanced because menopause is a dangerous state to be in. It creates so much fatigue and anxiety and uh, sleep, good sleep will really help you with this situation.